Hello, my friends! Welcome to an unboxing first impressions video with a quick writing sample of a new pen. And this pen is this pen. Aww. The pen is not in the box because I took it out so I don't drop it. This was sent over to me by Papier Plume because I was actually in touch with Fred and uh, he, we were just discussing the pens and he said, well, would you like to review this new one? I said, sure, because it looks really cool. And I have not, I have reviewed one of his other pens, which is the Petrar, the king size. And um, this is a slightly smaller one. So let us take a look at it. Thank you so much to Papier Plume for sending this over for a review. I think it's quite interesting and I will show you what it is. So this is the box. I really like this box, really simple, very low waste. It's recyclable, like it's all paper, cardboard. Uh, there's a small felt bed inside, but that's that's basically it. And I actually really like that. So like there's very little excess stuff, like it's not excessive, it's a very simple thing. This is not a big deal to store. You know, like I have some boxes that are just so massive. I'm like, I don't even know where to put this. So anyway. Nobody cares about the plights of someone who doesn't want to keep their boxes. So this is the pen. This is, okay, I don't want to mess up this name, so I'm just going to read it off the screen here. This is the Fagionato Petrarch Cotton Celluloid Le Majestic Fountain Pen. And that's a bit of a mouthful. Now, the, the appearance is modeled after the Le Majestic Hotel in France, um, the Hotel Barrière. And that's what I have for you in terms of its background. I think it's quite pretty. Yeah. Okay. So the price. Um, it starts at 280 because there are different nib options. Now, the nib that I have selected, let me just go to it here. I selected the titanium nib, which is an added $95, but you can get steel nibs in extra fine, fine, medium, uh, steel gold plated, extra fine, fine, medium, titanium and extra fine, fine, medium, and an actual gold, I believe it'll be 14K. I'm not sure though, because it doesn't say on here. Um, extra fine, fine, medium. So the titanium option brings it up to 375 US. Little on the pricey side, but um, it is interesting. So I don't know. Probably not the best value for three seventy five for a fountain pen, but a very nice looking one. I think it's very interesting. It's quite unique. So the material is cotton celluloid. So it has like I don't know, like these striations of like a silvery white. I'm just trying to make sure it focuses. Sorry, like striations of like a silvery white with like tortoiseshell brown. It's kind of like an arco bronze celluloid a bit, I think. Um, and I have no arco bronze here to show you. I'll, I'll grab my pen when I do the writing sample. Really cool. It's a very simple design. Like it's very clean and I really like that. So there's no, like nothing on the finial. The cap kind of smooths into the barrel. Um, it's And the clip is really nifty. I really like this clip design. I think it's unusual, it's unique, um, very simple and classy with just the engraving right there. Very practical, very close to the cap so the pen doesn't become very bulky. Now if we uncap it, it takes a standard international converter or cartridge. I think in theory you could eyedropper it because there's no reason not to, but I haven't done that. It's it's a slender pen when I compare it to the king size version that I had before but it's not skinny. I find it really comfortable. It's a very light pen. The cotton celluloid has a really nice feeling to it. It can be posted. I think it's really nifty. So this is a, a nib unit that you can screw out. So just saying, I haven't put any other nibs in it, but this is what the titanium looks like. I know it looks like a steel nib. It is not, it is definitely titanium. It is unmarked. There is no nib size or anything on it. But um, that's about it. I think it's, I think it's really cool looking. So, like really nifty. So if I mean, if you're looking for the one pen, the you only want to spend money on one pen. You want your biggest bang for your 
the biggest, not your biggest bang, the biggest bang for your buck. This is probably not it. But if you are, like, if you're into pens and you're just exploring and you want to try out something different, like, I don't see why it's not an option. So, there we go. Now let's do a writing sample because it's, of course, about the writing experience, not just about how the pen looks. Um, thank you again to Papier Plume. I will see you in a second. Mm, hello, welcome to the writing portion of the Fagionata Petrarch Le Majestic. As you can see under the light, this is a really pretty pen. I now realize I did not grab my Arco, so I'm gonna leave this here for a second. I know, it's terrible. You're still sitting there, but I am talking to you, and I am gonna grab my Arco to show you. So here is the Omas Arco. I know it's not the same thing, but it's kind of like it has the same vibe to me, like the coloration. And there are some some Arco pens that have more silver to them, which reminds me of this one more. But uh, yeah, there you go. I mean, it's not a it's not an Arco. They don't call it Arco. But anyway, I love that clip. Look how awesome that is. So let's do some writing because this is the point of the writing sample. You don't care about my rambling. This is a I'm gonna. Oh, sorry. I'm blocking. This is the Fagionata. Now, I'm writing at a higher angle because it is a titanium nib, and if I write higher, then it's less likely to flex, at least for me in my experience. Horrible handwriting because I can't hold a pen entirely well yet. It is super wet. This is a medium titanium nib. And the ink is actually Papier Plume 11. So let me show you. It's definitely a generous medium. Now the thing is, the nib is softer than the feed can handle, so if I overflex, it will railroad. But I mean, it's not really supposed to be a flex nib, you know? It's like a soft, bouncy nib. I find it fascinating. So you see after my flexing, it, it uh, hard started. I find it best to use a higher angle. I find the ink flow keeps up better, and then also you don't overflex it. Typically with vintage nibs, you use a low writing angle for flexing, but just because of the sweet spot on this, I find it is higher up. So I usually write a little bit higher as opposed to down here. I usually write like this, if that makes any sense. Now it's very prone to oil on pages and stuff like that. So just so you're aware, but I think this is super fun, a really fun nib to use. I really enjoy it. There you go. Really nice for adding some serious character to your writing. It's a nice gushy pen. I really enjoy it. I think it's beautiful. The writing experience is pretty cool. So long as you know how to work with the nib, because if you are wanting to flex constantly, it's not going to be able to do that. And um, it's sensitive to oils and stuff like that, like oils on the page. And I find the writing experience is best just a little higher off the page as opposed to really low. Just for me, like, it depends on your writing angle, but you can see it skips a little on the lower angles. So there you go. I hope that this has been helpful. Like if you're considering one and you're not sure what kind of nib to get, the titanium is a lot of fun. It might be a little bit of a learning curve, but I think they're really fun. And I mean, I personally enjoy writing like this, so it works for me. Thank you to Papier Plume for sending this over and to, um, to all of you for watching. I don't know why my brain fell apart there. I would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. And you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon as Gourmet Pens. So we will see you for the next video. Bye-bye.